Summary One Piece Chapter 1095 Title A World Doesn't Worth Living In Short Chapter of 15 Pages Reader Request in the Cover A Monkey Takes Buggy's Nose and Runs Away Chapter starts with the Vice Admirals prepare to help Saint Saturn, but Saturn orders them to stand down. Saturn says that he could easily dodge Bonnie's attack if he would have wanted to. Saturn pulls out the sword of his body and his blood disappears. Saturn attacks Bonnie and Sanji by emitting aura from his eyes. Bonnie and Sanji are knocked in the head and some blood coming out, but their heads don't explode. Kazaru apologizes to Saturn, he's still on the ground unable to move. Saturn. Your work is unusually slow this time. Saturn tries to stomp on Luffy but Frankie extends his arm and saves his captain. Luffy is still conscious but he doesn't say anything in this chapter. Vegapunk, Bonnie, Sanji and Frankie are unable to move due to Saturn's mysterious power. Vegapunk. If this is not a scientific power, then this must be devil fruit ability. Saturn grabs Bonnie and squeezes her. Bonnie. You killed my father. We see a little flashback of Kuma telling young Bonnie about Nika. Kuma makes Nika's drum rhythm sound and they dance together. Kuma. Bonnie, I want to be a hero who liberate people like Nika. Back to the present. Saturn says Kuma is part of Buccaneer race, the people who once committed a crime in the past. Buccaneer race, seems to have blood of the giants, making them unusually strong. A new flashback starts, it took place 47 years ago in Sorbet Kingdom. Kuma was born in a normal family, his father was a member of, Buccaneer race, and his mother was a normal human. The information about Kuma's blood test was leaked to a world government agent at the hospital, so Kuma's entire family was captured and became slaves in Mary Joie's due to their strength. After his mother's death, Kuma's father tells him about the legend of Nika. Kuma's father says it's a legend that has been passed down among Buccaneer race members. Kuma's father makes Nika's drum rhythm sound and starts dancing for Kuma, but he was suddenly shot in the head by a Tenryubido for making too much noise. Cut to 38 years ago. Tenryubido MC explains that once every three years, the Tenryubido comes down from Mary Joie's and conducts a human hunting game on a non-government island. Tenryubido releases problematic slaves on the island and wipes them out along with the native people on the island. After that, the world government claims the island is their own. The island that Tenryubido chose for that year was, God Valley, in the West Blue, the land with many valuable resources that dare to use the word, God, in its name. The king of, God Valley, tried to stop them but was killed by Saint Figurland Garling. This year game hasn't started yet, but Garling is the one that Tenryubido expects to be the, champion. Young Garling was very handsome, with half-moon hair, no beard. Many Tenryubido are swooning over him. Saturn is on, God Valley, as well, he looks exact the same that in the present. Saturn receives words that the, Buccaneer, child slave who escaped was captured. In the last page of the chapter, we see that Kuma is being dragged in the field by other slaves this part it's the continuation of the flashback Bonnie saw in chapter 1074. Then suddenly two shadows appear. Mysterious person. Hee haw. Hold right there you guys. You must be the, Buccaneer, the star of this. I see what they mean, you're indeed huge. They say the blood of giants runs within you. We can see that the two mysterious shadows are two child slaves. A young Emporio Ivankov and a girl named Ginny Ginny. Ivankov looks pretty similar to her adult appearance. Ginny Ginny is a short-haired smiling girl that is eating a piece of meat. Ginny Ginny. Isn't my big bro here huge too? Ivankov. Just the face though. Wait. That's not the point here you dummy. Ivankov talks to Kuma. Ivankov. I choose to live. What about you? End of the chapter. Break next week. Thanks to Reddit.